Dragon Ball, an anime franchise that has become notorious for the fact that even if a character dies, they don't stay dead for very long. And Pokemon, a gaming franchise that is known for the fact that the games lack permadeath and are honestly pretty easy. Many Pokemon fans have wished to find a way to make the games even more difficult than they already are by implementing self-imposed challenges onto themselves that skyrocket the game from a Weenie Hut Juniors all the way to a Salty Spittoon when it comes to difficulty. The most famous and most attempted self-imposed rule set is the Nuzlocke Challenge. The most fundamental rules of this challenge are that 1. If a Pokemon faints, it is considered dead, it can no longer be used in battle anymore. And 2. You can only capture the first wild Pokemon that you encounter on any given location. If you fail to get it, no encounter for you. But how can Dragon Ball possibly fit into the world of Pokemon, and a hyper-specific challenge within the franchise? Well. Welcome to Dragon Ball Z Team Training, a ROM hack of Pokemon Fire Red that completely overhauls the entire game, replacing Pokemon with fighters from the massive cast of Dragon Ball, adding or changing locations to iconic places from the world of Dragon Ball, and completely overhauling most trainer battles to be iconic characters from the franchise. So, if you're new to Dragon Ball, this is a twist on the classic Pokemon experience, and if you're new to Pokemon, this is a great introduction to how the game functions, but through a lens of Dragon Ball. Today, I'm going to share with you my journey as I attempted the ultimate Dragon Ball Z Nuzlocke. This adventure was not an easy one, with high highs and incredibly low lows. But what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Chapter 1. Hello Dragon World. Our journey begins on Mount Paozu, the same cozy forest that Goku lived for much of his own childhood. It is here where we meet the equivalent of the Pokemon professor in the game, Dr. Briefs. He introduces us to the world with how fighters have replaced Pokemon and capsules have replaced Pokeballs. It's details like these that really make this game such a fantastic and in-depth ROM hack. We name ourselves Lonk and the rival chat before eventually making it to the lab and making the first and probably most important choice of the entire game our starter. Instead of Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, we chose from the three most powerful Saiyans in the main story of Dragon Ball, Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan. Now, while it may seem like this is essentially just choosing from three identical choices, these three characters are all drastically different in how they're played. Gohan is probably the most straightforward starter choice, having the highest stat total after evolving once his Super Saiyan and then into his ultimate form. With his clear body ability, he's immune to all stat debuffs. Next is Vegeta, who is the glass cannon of the starters, sporting several risky moves and having an ability that just straight up raises his attack power. However, his final evolution is Majin Vegeta, which makes him a fighting and dark type. We'll get into this later, but dark types are terrible in this game. Finally, there's Goku, whose whole design is based around powering himself up in battle. Almost right from the start, Goku has access to the moves Kaioken and Kaioken Rush, which are pretty much the strongest moves for early game and can still be relevant all the way through. Due to this, and because he's my favorite Dragon Ball character, Goku is an easy choice. Thus, we can now begin to answer the question I posed in the title of this video. Can Goku become the Pokemon Champion? There's only one way to find out. Fittingly, our rival picks Vegeta, and we easily beat him with the already overpowered stat boosts of Kaioken. After doing a couple of quick chores for the Professor, we finally get our Scouter, which is replacing the Pokedex and get our Capsules. Our Nuzlocke has officially begun. As expected, the first few routes really don't offer any majorly powerful characters, as we fittingly catch a Cyberman, a Yamcha, and a Turles on our first three routes. In North Forest, there's a chance to get a Piccolo, but we get his fat sibling, so we don't even bother getting the encounter. With that, it's time for our first gym battle of the game, Yajirobe of the Saiyan Realm. You see, unlike other Pokemon games, the gyms aren't exactly based around a type. If it was, they would all probably be fighting type gyms, given how that's 90% of the entire roster. Instead, 
Each gym is roughly based around a part of Dragon Ball, going from the Saiyan Saga to Namek Saga to Cell Saga, and finally finishing with the Buu Saga. Unfortunately for Yajirobe, his gym is incredibly easy, having only two fighters, Raditz and Nappa. Kaioken Rush and its free attack boosts make quick work of the gym, and soon we're moving on to the next route. In the original game, there is a man outside Mount Moon who gives away a magic heart for a price, the joke being that if you invest in this useless Pokemon, it'll eventually become a powerhouse. In the game, Magikarp is now a Chaozu. I usually don't name my fighters, but someone had donated to name the next encounter, and thus, Jiren the Chaozu was born. While his offense was garbage, Chaozu did come with the very helpful ability to 100% guarantee paralyze against any opponent, which was insanely strong. On Mount Moon, we fittingly captured a Tien, who also picked up a Moonstone, which allows us to evolve Turles into a Great Ape. Around this time, we also picked up a Raditz. Great Apes are insanely overpowered in this game, sporting insane stats for early game as well as the Intimidate ability, which is strong regardless of what version of Pokemon you're playing. Also on Mount Moon, we encountered our first member of Team Pilaf, whose battle sprites are simply adorable. Aw, look at him. Also on Mount Moon, our Goku evolved into Super Saiyan Goku, and for now, that just means a major stat increase and not much else. Characters in this game, instead of strictly evolving, just achieve ch higher transformations, which makes sense for Dragon Ball. Luckily though, this time, Krillin didn't need to explode for it to happen. Anyways, escaping the mountain, we enter the brand new area that looks exactly like Namek. I seriously cannot praise the ROM hacker enough for how amazing they made the environments and backgrounds of the special areas look in this game. It's here in Namek Town that our first truly difficult battle occurs, and as we're confronted by our rival, Chat, before the bridge. This battle is the first representation of the wild difficulty curve that this game has. Just like in Dragon Ball, characters can quickly become irrelevant in power very quickly, which means that while most trainers are very weak, many boss trainers have fighters that can sweep your entire team if you're not careful. The fight begins we take advantage of Uzaru's stats and Intimidate to take out my rival's cooler, who is the ability Speed Boost, which makes them get faster every single turn. We then switch to Goku to hopefully take advantage of Kaioken, but a critical hit from Zarbon's forces us to go to for the kill instead. The rival then sends out the major threat on his team, his own Uzaru. Our two strongest fighters are now both too low to fight on a one and one so I send out Jiren to hopefully get the guaranteed paralysis. Get him, Chaozu! Get him, Jiren! Yes, Jiren! He's your... 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 your Jiren, no! <laughs> Chaozu! I don't have tri beam. I don't have tri beam. That'd been so cool. Oh no! Get him! Get him, Tien! Oh no! Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Oh! No. Oh! Oh! Oh God! Okay. Yes. Yo, get paralyzed! Okay, oh. okay, 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 okay. Wait, we intimidate, we intimidate, we intimidate. We intimidate, we intimidate, we intimidate. Lower the attack. Yeah, okay, okay, intimidate. Get paralyzed. Get paralyzed, you... Oh my god, okay, 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 okay. This is, this Uzaru is nuts! With no other option, I do an incredibly risky strategy of bringing out my Uzaru to repeatedly lower their attack so that their physical moves cannot kill. I think this is the only way. Please get paralyzed. Oh my god! Oh, my goat! My goat! Okay, we're so in this. 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 Haters are in shambles. Paralysis. We're so in this. We're so in this. Kaioken! Rah! We're so in this. We're, we're, we're so in this. We're so in this. Kaioken! We don't care. He's paralyzed again! Never punished! Oh, fuck. Do we get greedy? Do we Kaioken times two? Do we hit him with the Kaioken times two? Do we go crazy? Do we go nuts? We, we do this or we lose the run. Like, it doesn't... Kaioken! Oh, oh! Oh! Never punished! Never punished! Kaioken times four! Get out of my-
Mayim! This is for Jiren! No! I don't care! Get out of my game! Oh, oh no. Oh, you're, you're stupid! You, you're, you're dumb as hell, Vegeta! You're dumb! Get out of my game! Go get Super Vegeta dumb! Yes. Super Kaioken! Get out of my game! Let's go! Woo! Never punished! With the major roadblock passed, the next portion of the game is pretty easy. The next gym leader is way easier than the rival, Uzaru and Goku easily defeating Ginyu and Frieza. Uh, what this did show was that weaker characters were already beginning to fall off, as Yamcha's strongest move barely damaged Ginyu. Okay, Sloki Dan, get him Yamcha! Bro, come on! All right, guys. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna go on a break. I think I, I think I think that's all we needed to see, guys. I think uh, let's give it up for Yamcha, everybody. Let's give it up for Yamcha. But by defeating the gym, we gain access to Guru, who can power up weaker characters to keep them relevant for a little bit longer. Which is again both a really neat reference to the actual story of Dragon Ball and an amazing way to better balance the game. This was especially funny because after capturing Nail. Everyone was joking about Guru in chat. Being through that, I just couldn't be bothered to do that to slowly do that battle. Nail, I found your. <gasps> it's him, guys! It's him. Nail. <laughs> I'm in the game, Nail. Look, it's me. Nail. <laughs> Guys, I like I don't even want to talk to him. I feel like we're in the presence of like a higher being here. Guys, it's it's the it's the <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna read it in the voice, everyone. Here we go. Oh, he has a sprite! What the Soon after, someone donated money to specifically keep Yamcha on the team, meaning we were now stuck with an already subpar character. However, things were looking up as we had the opportunity to get a bunch of new encounters before the next gym. Let's see what we got. Still, with our hopes up, we boarded the SSN and encountered our rival for another mandatory battle. However, at this point, Tien had gotten the Volleyball Fist, which is a surprisingly powerful move that let him sweep through most of the team. Switching to Uzaru, we took advantage of Saiyan Power, a move that raises attack and defense to just barely take out his Vegeta, once again making it through with almost no HP. The next gym leader was Commander Red, whose team was the fitting trio of Android 16, 17, and 18. 16 and 17 were easy enough, but Android 16 had an absolutely devastating rocket punch. Damn, that sprite goes crazy! That pixel art is so good! Yo, whoa, that does so much damage! Okay, we got Intimidate, we got Intimidate, we got Intimidate, we got Intimidate. Luckily, we had Uzaru to lower his attack stat, but we probably would have lost members, or if not lost completely, if we had not had this ability. 16 just hits way too hard at this point. If we don't start getting actually powerful characters soon, we could eventually just begin bleeding members until we lose outright. To my luck though, after a short gauntlet of trainers, we reach Rock Tunnel, in which we get cooler. Like I mentioned before, having good stats and speed boosts make Cooler a potential monster, but with one glaring weakness. Like I mentioned before, dark types are really bad in this game, and that's because fighting types are the most common type in the entire game. Imagine playing a Pokemon game where every gym was water type, and you still choose the fire type starter. Making it through the cave, the game suddenly really opens up with a bunch of potential encounters, including what was a guaranteed encounter with essentially a legendary Pokemon, Hyrudegarn. But first, we headed to the game corner in West City, and after a bit of ethical cheating, we get enough coins to purchase Gotenks. To the west of... West City, we managed to get the best encounter in the entire game up to this point, Teen Gohan. With stats as high as a starter and a massive special attack stat, Gohan can mount even the most powerful fighters in one or two hits. 
We also call an Android 18. With the team having a massive buff and upgrade, we easily swept through Pilaf's hideout, especially when all of their fighters are dark types, making them all essentially one-shottable with fighting moves. At this point, maybe I was getting a little bit cocky, having not had any major issues for a while now, but I knew the next gym leader, Bulma, was scary with her level 33 perfect cell. With her level 34 Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. If I wasn't careful, I would definitely lose some members. I opted to go to the most reliable way to one-shot them, stacking Kaioken with Goku and hoping for the best. However, her second form Cell immediately crit and then got the confusion on Goku, immediately ruining our plan. Panicking a bit, I quickly beat the Cell with my cooler. My only hope now is to lower Gohan's stats with Uzaru, but even that isn't entirely effective given how Gohan's Kamehameha and best stat are his special attack. Yamcha falls to Gohan, and I plan to sack Cooler, but he lives, only for Uzaru to give one last Intimidate before being blasted away. With no other options, it was time for the mirror match. We thankfully outspeed and manage to beat that other Gohan, but are sitting at essentially half HP. But the battle isn't over. Come on. Do more than half? Come on, Gohan, live! Live Gohan, live Gohan, live Gohan, live Gohan. This guy's a fraud! Father, son, Kamehameha! Use your power, critical hit! Use your power, Gohan! Get out of my game! Let's go! It's canon! As it turns out, Cell didn't quite have the firepower to take down Gohan, letting us get yet another badge, but not without some major losses. Needing to fill in some more gaps in the team now, we head to Kami's Lookout where we beat our rival and catch Garlic Jr. before getting the Ocarina, which helps us battle Hyrutagarn. However, we decided to power up our team and take on Capsule Corp first. Evolving both Gotenks and Goku to Super Saiyan 3, it allows us to both beat our rival for the second time in under an hour, and beat Pilaf's Dark Types, and pick up the very powerful Android 16, who we named Lythera. With a substantially bulked up team, we are now able to take on Hyrutagarn. We capture and add to the team. With so many strong characters now, I honestly thought that Bulma's gym was just a one-time thing, and that Gohan was just particularly strong for this point in the game. I was wrong. Hercules' team starts off really weak with Goten and Trunks, who easily lose to my own Gotenks, but after that, things quickly go downhill. Oh, okay, so the wiki was wrong. <laughs> uh, we overleveled. That's, that's fine. That's fine. It wouldn't have made a difference. Unless he has a, he, unless he has something else. <gasps> That's too- oh! <gasps> He's got a boo tanks? Okay, okay, we got the right level cap, guys. Whew. That sprite is good, though. That did nothing! <laughs> we might need to blow this yeah. up. This might be the only way. I have no other option. I c we lost our Goku. We lost our starter, guys. <laughs> I decided to give chat the chance to vote for if we let Android 16 blow himself up or not. The vote being overwhelmingly in favor of blowing the big green Android up after we had just gotten him. Remember, if we blow him up right now, we we lose Android 16. 
We know. <laughs> oh god, this run might be over, bro. Oh, a, a critical hit. You can't play around that. Oh, a critical hit ghost kamikaze attack. Yeah, only 16. Yeah. 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 Live? Oh my god, he hits so hard! Please die, please die. Bootex is so strong! It didn't even work! It didn't even work! He's so strong! It wasn't worth it! All right, all right, all right, all right. Android 16 and Goku are dead. This means one thing. <gasps> He's healing! Okay, wait, that wasn't that much. That wasn't that much. That wasn't much. Critical hit! Gohan always clutches! He always clutches up! Yes! Oh... Oh my gosh. Now, without our starter and three more gyms to go, my hopes of beating this challenge suddenly became a lot slimmer. So to answer the question I posed at the start, no, Goku cannot become a Pokemon champion, but maybe Gohan can. Chapter two, even further beyond. Unlike between Bulma and Hercule, there are very few opportunities to pick up any new strong fighters between Hercule's gym and the next, which is Bobbity's gym. I did catch a Goten, who despite not being as strong as, say, Gotenks, does offer the possibility of hitting pretty hard with his Hustle ability, raising his attack power at the cost of accuracy. After a quick stop to the Safari Zone that yields a completely useless encounter, the next stop is Bobbity's Gym. Just like Hercule, Bobbity's team is made up of mostly weak fighters besides his Ace, which is an incredibly powerful form of Boo. Instead of Boo Tanks, this time it's Kid Boo. With Goku gone, our new sweep strategy involves Cooler, whose move Power Boost raises his special attack and defense, while Speed Boost raises his speed every turn. But once again, we get unlucky as Dabura lives on a sliver of health and gets a guaranteed paralysis with his Stone Spit. Still making quick work of the rest of his team, Bobbity sends out Kid Boo. This version of Boo is terrifying his own way compared to Bootanks, as he is the move Planet Burst, which is a 150 base power move without any drawbacks. Hoping that Cooler were outspeed regardless of paralysis, we unfortunately are still somehow slower even after all those speed boosts, as Kid Boo decides to go for Wrath instead. This is the best possible move, as Wrath is a normal type attack. Hyrudegarn is a ghost type in this game, making it completely immune to this attack. Kid Buu is now locked into for multiple turns, but we're not home free just yet, as Kid Buu's defense is monstrous, and Hyrudegarn simply can't do enough damage. Predicting Kid Buu is going to use the Planet Burst attack, I sack Android 18 off to allow for Gohan to come in, as Kid Buu is a dark type, a single punch from Gohan finishes him off. Once again, the final boss has gone down to Gohan. If we were to lose him, the run would be in shambles. After a quick ride across the ocean, we arrive at the place of the next gym, Roshi's Island. Besides the gym, the only place of importance here is the Pokemon Lab, uh, but for now it doesn't have much for us to do as we'll be visiting it later. Before we can go battle to his gym, we have to earn entrance by finding the secret key in the Pokemon Mansion. After doing some simple puzzles, we pick up the key and head to Roshi's gym. Luckily, we can avoid every trainer by answering pretty simple Dragon Ball trivia. For the third and final time, Roshi's team is weak besides his ace who, once again, is an even more powerful version of Boo, Buhan. Buhan's ability is clear body, meaning that none of his stats can be lowered. While in the Pokemon Mansion, we picked up Bujin, who is the guaranteed paralysis move that Chaozu did, which hopefully will help us deal with Buhan's insane stats. Also, before this gym, we added Raditz back to the team. Why? Well, just like Turles, he can evolve with the Moonstone and, when reaching a high enough level, becomes the Golden Great Ape. While powerful, their ability is useless against Buhan. After clearing up Roshi's first two fighters with Gotenks, I sent out Bujin and actually managed to get the paralysis off, only for Roshi to immediately heal it and Super Kamehameha Bujin away. Switching to Gold Nuzaru, 
The two of them are evenly matched. Uzaro could have gotten the kill, but Roshi fully heals him. I'm forced to switch to Gotenks, and well, we doubled our special attack stat. That was not crazy. Um, let's just keep Bomber anyway. We should live, I think. I, I think I played that right. He's healing again. This boo, this Buhan is crazy. <sighs> this is really scary. Um, Cause I feel like he's overdue for a crit. Um, come on. Live. <laughs> oh my god. With Gotenks obviously being too low and him being too good to let die, I'm forced to switch again to go into Hyrudegarn. After exchanging some hits, I make a fatally incorrect prediction. I assume Buhan would heal, but instead they go for the kill, losing us our Hyrudegarn. Then, as always, Gohan picks up where the rest of the team has failed, finishing Buhan off before coming face to face with his father. However, for what feels like the thousandth time, Gohan proves why he's a better replacement than Goku was on the team, defeating him without taking any damage. And thus, seven gyms are down with only one more to go. After the gym, before I can even do anything, we're suddenly brought to a brand new location that was creatively named in this game, Island 1, Island 2, and Island 3. And honestly, it feels like this place was designed for a Nuzlocke, as there are a bunch of areas that guarantee a bunch of new and old encounters. While here for the first time, we catch Trunks to go with Goten, a Cell, and a Piccolo, all who join the team. I'm about to go northwards to explore Mount Ember, but I get the sudden feeling that I shouldn't. So I decide to go back and have my third and final battle with Pilaf. You will once again face Pilaf, the greatest villain! Unfortunately, just like the last two fights, Pilaf is a major letdown when it comes to power. His team is once again made up of mostly dark types. At this point, even the forms of Boo are a bit less scary, as our Goten manages to one-shot Kid Boo. The only slight concern are his two Hyrudegarns, but for the most part, they have disappointing offensive power, and thus are eventually beaten without much nuance. With all gyms defeated, I only have a few more potential encounters before the Elite Four. My first target is Tapion, who is a guaranteed encounter during victory... That's right, I had completely forgotten about this rival battle, and I was not currently using my best team. Let's see how I did. The fight is going relatively smoothly until he sends out his Majin Vegeta. As I mentioned ages ago, Vegeta is a glass cannon who can output a lot of power but can't take hits. 53, yo! Alright, Goten, don't die. Goten, don't die. Goten, don't die. Goten, don't die! Oh, shit! It's canon, he knocked out Goten! Yes, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die. Oh! You gotta kill Go- Come on, Gotenks! Oh! At the same time here, both me and my rival have gotten incredibly lucky, as different damage rules would have probably killed either of us here. Meaning to limit Vegeta's power, I go to Sat Golden Nuzaru to at least get Intimidate, but Vegeta chooses to use a far weaker move, and the Golden Nuzaru just barely lives. In order to get a clean switch to Gohan, I unfortunately have to let Piccolo get KO'd. Thus, as punishment for my lack of preparation, we had lost two more team members. At that moment, I swore to never be underprepared, ever again. Chapter 3, Maximum Power. With Victory Road essentially just being an annoying puzzle with very little challenge when it comes to the trainers themselves, I spent the next couple of hours preparing the most powerful team possible to defeat the Elite Four. There were four targets I had in mind to creating the best possible Nuzlocke team for taking on the Elite Four. First, as I mentioned before, was Tapion. While his stats are terrible and his ability is useless, Tapion has this move, Song, which might be the strongest single move in the entire game. This allows Tapion to put the opponent to sleep without fail. 
My plan for Tapion was to use them against one single fighter during the entire Elite Four and nothing else. Thus, I had to build my team essentially around him. Next was Majin Buu, who appears as an encounter on Victory Road. However, he's not guaranteed, but we, there are several other things we can do to raise the odds. By using a level 45 fighter and then a repel, we can essentially make it a 50-50 chance between getting Buu and Janemba. While Janemba is strong, Buu is way better. Here's how it went. Let's pray for an encounter here. Boo, 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 boo. Let's go! Let's go! Yes! Yes! But why is Boo so much better than Janemba? Well, remember the lab I talked about on Roshi's Island? Well, in that lab is the fusion machine. And using it, we can take Boo, who had evolved into Super Boo, and fuse him with Gotenks to make Boo Tanks. And we already know how strong Boo Tanks was. Next, we headed back to One Island, where we actually ventured into the mountain this time. Climbing our way to the top while avoiding any encounters, we get a guaranteed encounter with Broly, essentially a replacement for one of the three legendary birds. While using a legendary and a Nuzlocke might be a little bit questionable, Broly's stats are not higher than characters in the Elite Four, so he's fine in my book. Broly is an absolute offensive powerhouse, sporting a broken ability, strong setup moves, and some of the hardest hitting attacks in the game. The only problem is that he is embarrassingly slow, meaning he will almost always get hit first, which makes sweeping very difficult. The same goes for our fourth and final pickup, Bojack, who is found in the Seafoam Islands. He is a slightly less offensively powerful version of Broly, but with more balanced stats to compensate. And thus, the final team was born. Gohan, Bootanks, Raditz the Golden Grey Ape, Tapion, Broly, and Bojack. Certainly, it was not the team I expected to be using when starting this Nuzlocke, but one that was more powerful than I had imagined. The Elite Four in this game are the four Kais, East, West, North, and South. Each is progressively stronger than the other and have some of the strongest fighters who have yet to appear in this game. Going into the fight, there are two more rules to this Nuzlocke that you should know. I cannot use items in battle, and I cannot have a higher level Pokemon than the boss I am currently fighting, meaning I can raise the, to the level cap after each fight instead of instantly raising my team to level 60 and then steamrolling. I find that these rules were the most fun and the most fair, but I'm getting away from the reason we're here. To win. Stocking up on Sensu Beans and being absolutely terrified, I make my way up to the door of the Elite Four. I honestly have no idea if I can win at this point, knowing the opponents I have to face coming up. I'm going to let this part play out with only a couple cuts, as I share my thoughts throughout the process along the way. I think me summarizing it after the fact removes the kind of excitement that I was feeling at the time, uh, and the less than excitement I was also feeling. If you've somehow made it this far, thank you so much, and if you haven't, why not like and subscribe? This video was a massive passion project of mine and completely different from anything I've ever made before. So I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Either way, see you on the other side. Let's do this, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Let's fucking do this. How, how far do you think you're going to make it? I hope I win. I mean, that's the goal, right? Welcome to the Dragon League. I am East Kai, and I'm going to give you a foretaste of the four Kai's power. You think you can beat us easily? Haha, ha. I've already beaten strong trainers. Then come on, little kid. Let's do this, guys. This... Ba -ba -da. Oh, guys, I think it's I think it's Jover, guys. I or I, I don't know if she was had powerhouses like Aqua on her team. Oh my gosh, okay. He actually did get the confusion. I do I actually have to switch here. Ah, baited the Sensu. Calculated. Let's get a free shield up. Just in case. Calculated. Oh my gosh, read like a book. Honestly. Let's see how much this does. Oh, Bojack's nuts. Bojack hits like a truck. Oh my god, it's cannon, guys. Guys, it's cannon. It's cannon. Die, woman. <laughs>
Bye, Zanya. All right. Janimba, Janimba. Oh my God. Easy. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, listen, hey, listen. Chill, chill, chill on me, chill on me. Freezer! Yeah, guys, Bojack's... Guys, I think Bojack's pretty strong. Debora. Oh my gosh, guys. Dude, dude, Bojack is so strong. <laughs> hey guys, Broly's stronger than Bojack. Alright, first fight easy. The, the first Elite Four, always a cakewalk. Not stressed at all. You're better than I thought. Go on ahead. You only got a taste of the Dragon League's power. Alright, let's go. I am South Kai. Through rigorous training, people and fighters can become stronger without limit. Enjoy the power of the fighters who have been trained by a god. Uh, Mr. Satan is a gym leader. Oh my god, look at his little smile! He's so friendly! Oh, guys, we lost. It's Cell. <laughs> guys, he has Cell. <laughs> How can we beat Cell, guys? Excuse me? Torby's insane! Yeah, we're gonna lower that attack, buddy, okay? Oh, get paralyzed, idiot. Oh my gosh, Torby's... Torby's crazy! We gotta sleep him. How much damage? Oh my god. Torby's crazy! We have to do this. We have to do this. It's the only way. Alright. Alright, go on. Let's go. That Torby got so lucky. What the hell? <laughs> Bro was cracked. I was making fun of him. Bro, I was making fun of him. <laughs> and then he rolled me. Um. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, he's sending out... Uh, okay, we're fine. Sending out Tapion. Again, stats not crazy. It's just that he can do sing. Or song, rather. Oh, and he missed the air slash. Get punished, dude. Get out of my game. All right. Oh my god, that was scary. Nice. Easy. Spopovich. Um... I think we should stay in with Gohan. Uh... This is for Videl! <sighs> Easy. Easy clap. King Cold? Okay. Maybe you should chill! Oh my god, King Cold the tank. Doesn't matter, he's an idiot. Are you just going to collect all the quotes that I say during the stream? Alright, perfect. Use the Senzu. No, no. Uh, Bardock says that. Pop.
Uh, who, who would we switch to? Maybe, maybe Boo Tanks here. I keep forgetting that Boo Tanks isn't a dark type, so he doesn't actually have the fighting type weakness. Um, I feel like Boo Tanks is the move. Maybe. Do we give him? I, do I want to send out Broly right now? I want to save the the power points of all the characters. That's the thing, right? Uh, is SSJ Bardock in the game? Yes. We'll stay in Gohan. We're fine. Don't crit, please. Alright, well. Alright, there goes Gohan's uselessness. There goes go hit, go hit. That's him. That's him out of the picture. Um. All right, doesn't even kill with a crit. We're fine. Ah! He's holding an item. Oh my gosh. He's got a citrus berry. Okay. Um. Alright, hold on. He did... Uh... 110 damage. A crit would kill. Um... What? Wait, what are... What are, what are his stats here? Defense, 133. I'm not leaving him in, guys. Don't worry. I think we go Broly here. Just don't paralyze. Just don't paralyze. Just don't paralyze. Nice. Uh, yeah, let's get him out of here. Yo, 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 yo! Oh! <laughs> Holy shit! Get the f*** out of here! Kill him, Broly! Oh! Kakurat! <laughs> I am the West Kai. All the West Galaxy is mine. Do you think you have a chance to win against a person like me? I already know who is going to win this battle, but I'm curious to see how strong you are. Oh, oh well. Oops. I mean, technically I could rewind it, but it's fine. Oh no, a little bit of drama. Pycon, what is you doing? You know, when I say, like, read like a book, this is what I'm talking about. Read like a book. Did Gotenks die? No, Gotenks is alive. Uh, he got absorbed by Super Bill. <laughs> That's a little scary. Loser, he missed. What the heck? Get out of here, Pycon. You using Piccolo? I think we're fine. Oh my gosh, Piccolo. I'm so sorry, dude. This game did you so dirty, man. 
Yeah, okay, we're gonna switch now. That Garlic 2 is coming here. Uh, we'll just go Bojack. The only scary thing about uh, Garlic Jr. is that he does have the equivalent of Arena Trap. Um, so, like, technically, he can, uh, you can't switch while he's out, but he's a Dark type, so who cares, you know? Nice. Oh, Kid Boo. We're staying in. All right, here comes Planet Burst. Really nothing we could have done to play around this here. Except by living. Oh my gosh, Bojack! You're... Oh my gosh, Bojack! Oh! Now we switch. Dude, he's not a goat, he's a horse! Oh my gosh! Bo bro is bojacked. Uh, oh, I almost said explosion. Uh, yeah, we gotta go for it. All right, please get a high roll and kill. Please just get a high roll and kill here. That's fine. Just don't kill. Just don't get. Just don't crit. Just don't crit. Just don't crit. Please get a. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We're gonna probably use all of our ghost kamikaze attacks right now, which is perfectly fine because he's. We don't need this move for any other fight. This move is almost designed specifically to mess up Hyrudogarn. Um. Oh my god, I wasn't paying attention! I'm so dumb! I'm so dumb. Oh my god, I wasn't paying attention to HP. I'm so stupid. We're fine. I'm so dumb. No one pay attention. No one pay attention. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Easy. Okay. Alright, I got punished. 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 It's fine, guys. I got punished. It's, it's, just, it's just what happens. I was... It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Bootanks. Okay. Bootanks did his job. Let's go. Ah, I've heard about you, Lonk. I am North Kai. I'm not going to tell you that my fighters are all powerful. I'll let you see for yourself. You've been all the gym leaders and the Kais except one. Your league challenge ends with me, Lonk. Let the final battle begin. I think his Pokemon are harder than Blue's Pokemon, yeah. He is Vegito and Gogeta. Blue doesn't have stuff like that. Okay. Ollie Boo. Don't don't fuse. Nice. I don't I'm not use. I'm. I really don't want to use items in battle. I've not used items in battle up to this point. Yeah, that's what I'm. Trev's. That's what I'm concerned about. I don't know if Broly. Can, I don't think Broly can tank. He can special tank. His special defense is insane right now. But I don't think his normal defense is high enough at this point.
Why don't you want to use items in battle? It's just a way to make the Nuzlocke harder, because no items are broken. Like, I could have given... Like, I could have given Broly an X speed, and then just healed him until he wasn't take Until the opponent missed, and then just dropped, like, five X attacks on him. Um... Don't risk it. Yeah. I've I've depended so many times on trying to sweep and it just hasn't worked out. Um Let's let's go Bojack. It's unfortunate. We are higher level. Um Oh, he was going to go for a Kamehameha, too. That is... Goku's fast. Oh, my gosh, dude. Oh, my God. Please heal. Yes! Yes! Oh, Bojack! That was a beautiful... Got him to use a Sensu Bean. So good. Um, I think we have to stay in. I think Bojack has to keep cooking. Eighty-five, ninety. It's just stronger. Okay. Never misses, too. What a goat. Bojack, you live this. Every day of the week. Every day of the week, Bojack. Wait, he's faster now? What the hell? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I maybe that move goes first. Speed tie? Maybe. Oh, <gasps> beautiful. Here we go. <sighs> okay. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. Oh, is he using Stardust Breaker? Kill him, Gohan, please! Tapion, 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 listen to me, buddy. I've brought you this far, and it's to do literally one thing. And it's to make Vegito fall asleep right now. This is the only reason I brought you. Bro's asleep. Come on, Tapion. That's a crit. Oh, fuck. Now we go Golden Uzaru. We lower that stats. Nice. Nice. Bro is EP. Uh, we say in power. So if he wakes up and hits hard, it doesn't do that much damage. Yes! 
This is the power of a low class Saiyan warrior! Raditz! Okay, okay, so now his defense up is one stage, Vegito's attack is down, we just go for the body slams. Oh, he's snoozing! <gasps> Critical hit! Let's yes. go! Let's go! Raditz! The goat! <sighs> okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Golden Goat Saru. Goat it's. Chat. Hey, Lonk. I was looking forward to seeing you, Lonk. My rival should be strong to keep me sharp. While working on my scouter, I looked all over for fighters. Not only that, I assembled teams that would be any fighter type. And now, I'm the Dragon League champion. Lonk, do you know what that means? I'll tell you. I'm the most powerful trainer in the world. We're just going to do game music, guys. I don't want to get the stream taken down right before the final boss here. All right. Our Golden Uzaru is literally just a better version than his. Um... His has Uzaru Beam. Ours doesn't, though. That's fine. Oh, my gosh. Any DBZ music is going to get copyrighted, yeah. Okay, I, th I think we just kill here. Come on. Mm. All right. I think he heals here. All right, good. We baited his first heal. We're going to switch now. Uh, let's go into... Let's go into Gohan. That's normal damage. <sighs> That's a lot of damage. Gohan live, Gohan live, Gohan live, Gohan live, Gohan live. Don't get crit, don't get crit, don't get crit, don't get crit, don't get crit. Easy. We, guys, we can't play around the crit anymore. We have no options. Alright. Zorbon 2. Uh, let's kill that with Broly. Light work, no reaction. I think Zarbon's our opportunity to full power. We're faster? Yeah. Kakarot! Key blast, dude. Just don't crit or something. Lame. Okay, cool. Yeah. Alright. Kakarot! Oh, it, oh, guys, it might just be over. Kakarot! He's hardening! He's scared! He's terrified! You know who else is Kakarot? <laughs> uh, uh, get Buster Shelled, idiot. Come on. Come on. Come on. Buster Shell, just blow him up, please. Nope. 
No, I'm gonna use it again. Oh my god, he's wasting all of his heals. He's so dumb. He's wasting it on Metal Cooler. What a loser. How about you harden some bitches, bro? God damn. Death ball? Okay. All right, here comes Majin Vegeta, everybody. We're faster? What an idiot! Get out of my game! Go be a dark type somewhere else, the prince of all three Saiyans? What a loser! Prince of darkness, my ass. Oh, Broly. All right, let's get out of here, Broly. Oh, all right. He's charging the Makonko Sapo! <laughs> he's trying to special beam cannon! Oh my gosh, he's desperate! Let's go! GG! We did it! First try! End that pull! We won! Yeah, you lost, idiot! Woo! We're the Dragon League champion! And with that, I'd become the Dragon Ball Nuzlocke champion. This final stream got up to 20 concurrent viewers, which is the most I'd ever had, and as promised, if I won, I would do the $30 haircut speech from the Super Android 13 movie. Now is computers trying to kill me? That's right. This particular computer's been programmed to think that it is Dr. Jiro. It's down there scheming and planning, trying, it's, trying to realize its number one ambition, which is to see you dead. I know, I know, I should just let bygones be bygones, but it ain't the way it's gonna be. I was programmed to kill you, boy, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do, you hear? You're just a slave, a pawn with no free will of his own, is that it? Free will, pitiful humans, war, segregation, hatred. Is that what you've done with your free will, boy? Don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut. Goku dies! We'll see about that, you red ribbon redneck. All right, that was a little gift for chat. But now, our journey comes to a close. Thank you all again for watching this video and supporting my channel both now and in the future. But that's all for me today. See ya!